example illustrates why the atomic mass that is included in your atomic mass table in your textbook in your reference sources and also in these lectures you can pull it up at any time why the atomic mass is sometimes a number that is very far from a whole number and that is because Many elements are mixtures of isotopes. In this case, we're looking at the specific example of copper. Look at this number, the average atomic mass of copper. It's a long way from a whole number. Now, why is that? Well, we're given the reason here. Copper contains two isotopes, one of which has a mass of 63, copper 63, and one of which has a mass of 65, copper 65. At the end of this lecture, you learned how we interpret that by means of understanding the different numbers of neutrons that may be present in the nucleus of any particular element. Elements are characterized by having the same number of protons in their nucleus, the same nuclear charge, the same atomic number, but they may have different numbers of neutrons, leading to the existence of isotopes of the element. So, 63.55 is the average atomic mass of the two isotopes of copper. Now let us suppose that copper 63 has a mass of exactly 63 AMUs per atom And let us also suppose that it is present to the extent of X percent of copper. Copper 65 has a mass of 65 AMUs per atom, exactly, and must be present to the extent of 100 minus X percent of copper. That's because, let me stress this again, there are only two isotopes. If one is present to the extent of X percent, the other must be present to the extent of 100 minus X percent because their percentages must add up to 100 percent. They are the only two isotopes. So now let us calculate the average atomic mass First, let's work on the X percent. We have X percent over 100 percent of copper 63, which has a mass of 63.00 AMU, plus 100 minus X percent over 100 percent. That's the fraction, that is copper 65, of mass 65.00 AMU. And we know what the sum of those two numbers is. Must be the average atomic mass, which is 63.55 atomic mass units. Well, let's clear that up. Zero. 0.6300 x AMUs cancel out throughout as you can see plus 
point zero zero minus zero point zero point six five zero zero x equals sixty three point five five. Just look at that equation for a moment and check each part. We have x over one hundred percent times sixty three, that means zero point six three. We have one hundred over one hundred times sixty five, that is sixty five and x over 100 times 65, which is 0.6500x, equals 63.55. If we simplify that, we get negative 0.0200x equals negative 1.45. And solving that for x, x equals 1.45 divided by 0 0.0200 equals 72.5. So, our answer is as follows. We have 72.5% of copper 63 and the residue, 27.5% of copper, 65. And that is the answer to our problem. By the way, there are only three significant digits that I've given in this answer, and that's because this difference is really only to three significant digits. Let me point out something interesting about this problem, maybe something a little unexpected. When you saw that average atomic mass of 63.55, you might well have thought that means copper must be about 50% 63 and 50% 64. But as you see, that's not the case at all. You can't jump to conclusions about the existence of particular isotopes just by looking at the average atomic mass. You have to determine which isotopes are present. And the determination of isotopes is by a technique called mass spectrometry. which is basically making ions from the element, shooting them through magnetic and electric fields, and seeing how far they are deflected. 